are going to be in Matthew, the 14th chapter. We're going to be uh, talking about the feeding of the 5,000. And there's a backstory. There's always... Context is really important when we look at the Scripture. And we need to know what has just happened before Jesus goes and takes place in these, this story that is, you know, we have all, if we've been in church at all, we've heard the story of the feeding of the 5,000. Uh, from the time we were your grandkids age uh, until, you know, we're 71 years old, we've heard the story of the feeding of the 5,000. But what had just taken place? Why, why was Jesus out where he was at? He was trying his best to get away from people. Because John the Baptist had just been beheaded by Herod. He, he was wanting to be away from people. He was wanting to away, be away to grieve. He was wanting to be uh, by himself. I have a good friend with me here today. Andy Beebe's here. Andy used to, uh, he was in the transportation business. Um, he, he took people in a bus that had wings and flew. And he would be gone from home for, th- for anywhere from three to six days. And then he'd come home, and he, he didn't want to talk to nobody. He wanted to be away. He had been dealing with people for the last three to six days, you know, group after group of people that had getting on the plane, and he had to smile at everybody and tell them, how good it was to see them when maybe it wasn't. And he had a 24-hour rule that sometimes we would keep and sometimes we wouldn't, depending on when he got home, that he just needed time to get away. He needed time to decompress. He needed time to, to get back into the flow of things. Jesus needed some time. John the Baptist had just been beheaded by Herod. And so he's gotten away. And then we read in the, in the 14th chapter of uh, the Gospel of Matthew. And by the way, you can find the story of the 5,000 in all four Gospels. So this is a pretty important story. Because there are often that we find, oh, this story is in the Gospel of Luke, but it's not in the Gospel of Matthew. Or this story is in John, but it's not in Mark. This one is in all of them. And if you get down to about verse 13, I want to read uh, from from the gospel. And again, just to let you know, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. uh, And I use this just because it's easier to read from. uh, Not because it's more right or not right or whatever. It says, now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. And when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. And now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, we have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowd to sit down on the grass and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. And then he broke the loaves, gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds And they all ate and were satisfied, and they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. I have four points today for my sermon, and they're in reverse order. I want to talk about Jesus first, and I want to talk about the people who were there. It says, but, so point number one, Jesus was a man of compassion. He, 
even though he needed time to be by himself, he needed time uh, to realize that the one who had prepared the way for him had just been killed. He, he wanted to have time to just talk with his father. And he gets off of the boat, and there's these crowds of people who have come. And they brought those who were lame. They have brought those who, who are having trouble hearing. He brought those that had different ailments with them. And he sees them and it says that he had compassion on them. And he began to heal them. He began to take care of them. He, he began to meet their needs putting his needs to the side. That's a hard thing to do. That's, that's a hard thing for us to do. It's a hard, it was a, had to have been a hard thing for Jesus to do, but it, it tells us so much about him as, as a man, as, as God's son that he cared more about other people than he cared about his own needs and desires. And when we see that in people, when we actually see that in people, we are drawn to them. We, we want to be around that type of a person, and we, we literally want to be that type of person. I, Lloyd and I were talking a little bit last night about Dad, And there was one summer, Dad got two weeks vacation a year. That was it, two weeks. You know, we, we think that we should have two weeks after six months anymore. But he had two weeks of vacation a year. He took his two-week vacation and drove Barry bus. Got up at 4 o'clock in the morning, got on the bus, put up with a bunch of kids, drove us out to the valley where we picked berries, at the end of the day, drove us back home. That's how he spent his vacation. Because if he didn't, then there would have been about 45 kids who would not have had a chance to go out and get strawberries all over them and make 6 or $7 a day. Compassion is something that draws us to people draws us to them and i just saw my brother whisper into his wife's ear and he said ray never made six or seven dollars a day because he never picked enough strawberries to make six or seven dollars a day but jesus also if we if we look at verses 15 through 21 uh, he's a he's a man of miracles he he did things uh, as, as God's son, as fully man, as fully God, that nobody else could do. And I always think, I think this is funny, as I, maybe I look at some of these stories in the Bible the wrong way, but they stole some kid's lunch. You know, they took this little boy's lunch, they stole his lunch, and, and the disciples say to Jesus, oh, we've got five loaves and two fish. No, you didn't. You took the kid's lunch and then claimed it to something that you had. And that's, I, think that's, I think that's kind of funny. But that's sometimes the way that people are today. That, but he, they took, and he had five loaves and two fish. And Rhonda, I forgot my little fish that I was going to bring in today. But uh, you know, it was, didn't say that he had you know, five loaves great big huge loaves of bread and two Chinook salmon that weighed 35 pounds apiece. That's not what it says. It said he had five loaves. A child had carried it. Probably mama had put it in some sort of a, something for him to carry that morning. He had it and it was just five loaves and two fish. But Jesus took the five loaves and two fish and turned it into a banquet feast. He turned it into enough for everybody who was there. 
plus. There was leftovers. I, I, I think that we need to we need to think about that a little bit. As, as God's people, there's enough. God has enough for all of us. He, he takes care of us. I mean, those of you who, who were here yesterday and saw the food that was here and saw the food that my nephew consumed, uh, he ate more at one sitting than I will sit and eat in two, three days. And I'm talking about your boy, Jesse, Richard. My goodness gracious, that kid put, but you know what? There was still enough food to go around. There was enough for everybody. In fact, there's leftover pie in the refrigerator downstairs. There's leftover that we're going to have today for lunch at Lloyd's house. There's, there was leftover. It was much like the, the 12 baskets were gathered back up and, and there's still more and let's go have dinner again. When, when Jesus does something, when he provides, he provides more than we deserve and more than enough for us. And I, I think we forget that far too often. The... We have a hard time being thankful people. We always seem to think that there's got to be something else. There's, there's got to be more. Uh, or I, I've got to have something new. Uh, I, you know, there's just got to be something better. How about satisfaction with what we have? Now, for you who drive Chevys, that might be difficult. But for us four drivers, hey... We're happy. We're happy. You know, we, we've got the pickup. It goes down the road most of the time. Well, that's kind of the part of the story about Jesus I want to tell, but I want to, let's look at people. Let's look at the people side of this. The people were unprepared for a day with Jesus. Except for one little boy. One little boy whose mama sent lunch with him. He was ready for the day. And in fact, it says it's at the close of the day, and he hadn't ate his lunch yet, so he was ready for the night too. I'm going to be with Jesus. I want to be prepared to spend time with him. I want, to, I want to be able to clear, clear the deck, clear the mind. Just I want time with Jesus. You know, people, people will often ask me, they'll say, well, Ray, how do you, man, you drive back and forth from Lone Rock every week? That is so far. And what do you do? Sometimes my wife doesn't come with me. So guess who gets to travel with me? God's right there. I get to talk with Dad all the way. And we have some really weird conversations. But they're important conversations. Sometimes we just, we need to be prepared to spend some time with, with God. You know, to, to clear the books. And, and, and take the calendar and wipe it clean and just spend time with Him. Because often we are just far too busy. Often we've got so many things planned. I was teasing my little brother. I said, well, you can come over and see me. Oh, no, I can't because I've got to do this on this day, and then we've got this plan for the next day, and then the, and then the next, and then the kids are going to be playing softball. Grandkids are going to be playing softball. And that's the way our life goes often. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you, there are days that you just need to wipe the calendar clean. And just clean. And spend the day with Dad. Spend it with him. You know, and it may be that you're behind, you're looking through a, a windshield cracked as it may be, going down the road and you're spending, but that could be time that you need to spend with God. And sometimes when you drive, 
you really need to talk to him and ask him for patience because you're dealing with other people during that time. The question that I would ask us then are, do we, do we come to church on Sunday morning unprepared? Or do we come to church, I, I, I mentioned this three or four weeks ago, do we come here expecting God to be here and to us to come face to face with him, us to have a chance to see him, us to have a chance to witness what he's doing? in our lives and in other people's lives? Do we come with expectations or do we just come with routine? We have to be careful. We need to be prepared to spend time with God. And number four, we as people, just as these people in this story were, we need to be satisfied both physically and spiritually with Jesus. We really don't need anything else. Uh, we just, we don't need anything else. I'm not saying that we don't want some other things. I'm just saying that God and Jesus provides all that we need. And there are times when that is hard to comprehend and hard to to live out when things are not going the way that we want them to go and notice i said the way we want them to go i think one of the best memes that i have seen on on facebook in a long time was uh, my plan for my life and god's plan for my life and on our plan is this, and then God's plan is a lot of this other stuff. And then we get there. The Probably one of the best things for me, and I'm speaking just for myself, that has come from this last year of losing no I didn't lose of, of three of my family members going on to be with God is being able to look back and have memories uh, we were I, I was looking at it again this morning my sister for my dad's 80th birthday put together a, a book that uh, she asked each of us to write a letter to dad she grandkids and she's got pictures of of all of all of his grandkids and, and great grandkids up to that point but i was i was reading memories of of lloyd and penny's children this morning uh, and to our shock uh, billy did write a letter to grandpa on his 80th birthday but it was the things one of the things that caught me in that little half of a sheet of paper that Billy had written on, was he said one thing. He says, thank you for the time. <sighs> that which you can never get back. But thank you for the time spent hunting and fishing and camping. And I remember that we had the whole week, me and you, Grandpa, I had the whole week on the Deschutes River fishing. Thank you for the time. We need to be able to say that to our Father in Heaven. Thank you for the time that you have allowed me to spend with you. Thank you for the time when you, when I was the one who your undivided attention has been given to. 
Thank you that you can do that with us. No matter who we are, no matter where we are, and no matter what we have done. There are times when I am sure that God in heaven shook his head and said, Ray, why are you being so obstinate? And why are you being so such a foolish person? And I'm sure that, well, I'm fairly confident that there are times when he said, good job, son, good job. Appreciate what you're doing. But I think the key that what, I, what I'm trying to say is that we're his kids, we're his children. He wants to spend time with us. And we need to desire to spend time with him. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, thank you for the day. Thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace that you give to us on a daily basis. Uh, give to us when we probably don't deserve it. But you show us how much you really love and care for us in that. I pray that you would that you would be with each and every one who is here today, that as we, as we prepare to, to go forth from here, that we, would, that we would take the good news of Jesus Christ with us. And I pray this in Christ's holy and precious name. Amen. In the morning when I...